So let's move on to page three. And you may notice a pattern appearing here, but these questions are all about equivalent fractions. This time it's giving us, um, basically it's like if you took just your half fraction strips and just your fourths and put them together, or just your half fraction strips and just your sixths. So you can also recreate these uh, using your fraction strips if you have those. Now our job here is to figure out uh, how many fourths equal one half. Does that sound familiar? So again, all we have to do is the same thing. We know that this is one half, one out of these two pieces, so we need to see how many fourths that is. So this one, you're fine to shade in because you only have to use these one per question. So one half is equal to one, two out of four, or two fourths. Now at the bottom, it says use the fraction strips to answer these questions. So you'll need to figure out which uh, one of these to look at in order to solve the question. Now you might be able to solve these in your head uh, and some of them are maybe more obvious than others, but let's look to the sheet to solve them. So two halves now equals how many fourths? So I need to find the question that has halves and fourths and that's this first one here. So one half is equal to two fourths, but now they want to say if I have both of these pieces, how many fourths do I have? So if I have one half and one half, I also have four fourths. This one is asking me about fourths and eighths. So I need to find the question that shows fourths and eighths in order to make that uh, translation. So here I have the fourths and the eighths. And it says if I have three fourths, how many eighths do I have? So let's check out three fourths. One fourth, two fourths, three fourths. So how many eighths do I have knowing that these are all one eighth? Well if I have three fourths I know that I have this many here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six eighths and so on. This last sheet is also asking you to think about equivalent fractions. This time, instead of showing them the way we show them with numbers, it's asking you to look at the pictures, identify the first fraction, and then create an equivalent fraction in the second one and show what the name of that fraction would be. So the first thing we have to figure out is what is this fraction? Well, we know the denominator, the number at the bottom, is all the pieces in that circle all together the ones that are shaded and the ones that are not. So let's figure out what our denominator is. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we know that we're talking about fifteenths. Now we have to figure out what the numerator is by figuring out how many are shaded in. So let's go the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So this fraction is 10 fifteenths. Now, if we had the same cake or cookie or pie or however you want to think of this, but we chopped it only into three pieces instead of into 15, maybe we're having a much smaller party this time, then we're gonna highlight the same amount. So we're gonna color in just as much on this fraction as is colored in on this one but we're gonna end up with a much smaller and friendlier fraction. So here we have the shape cut into thirds, one, two, three. So our denominator is three, and the amount that's shaded is two thirds. Now, interesting. Let's see if the same thing happened as happens on the first sheet when we're doing equivalent fractions. So to get from three to 15, I actually have to do five times three. Three, six, nine, 12, 15. I have to skip count by three five times in order to get to 15. So if I skip count by two five times, I should get to 10. And I know you fast math people have already figured that out, but let's verify. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. So this checks out. There are two ways we can verify that. Let's take a look at this one. This one goes in the opposite direction and it gives us the smaller fraction and then turns it into a big fraction over here or I should say a larger denominator. Of course, the size is the same. So let's find out what this first one is. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces. So it's sevenths. And one, two, three, four, five are shaded. So we have five sevenths. And now let's move to the next one. How many pieces is this divided into for starters? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteenths. Now take a moment and see if you can figure out what this number is going to turn into without coloring or without uh, shading. Just see if you can do it mathematically. So what does seven have to do in order to become fourteen? Hopefully some of you have remembered that that's a double. So if we double five, that should give us our correct answer. Let's put that in and then use coloring to verify this time. So it looks like this line comes from about here. So we'll match that to here. And it goes straight up here. And we'll go all the way around. A little sloppy there, but that's okay. Um, and I'm not going to shade this in just to make it easier to count. So let's count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Amazing. Now we're going to shade it in. So that makes sense. And with the rest of the questions, you're just going to do the exact same thing. So find out first what fraction you have here. Color in the same amount in the second one and identify what the equivalent fraction is. Good luck.